Hi, my name is Kari Skoglund, and I'm the director for Handmade Tale, Episode 7, called After. So this opening shot was very important to me to have a very bird's eye view. So we sent a drone up to scout uh, where uh, we were going to find this little stand of trees. We had set the entire scene um, on a, actually a golf course and the golf course you can see is further down there. Uh, the reason for that was because I wanted some scale and scope to um, the the level of hills, which suggested, you know, the classic military style graveyards. You can see here in the framing, it was very important to me that we had this juxtaposition of the weapons, uh, which were, you know, foreground and black with the passing red. I like what I call heavy air, which means the air is active. And so uh, whether it's wind or rain or snow, it creates a certain mood. So it was very important to me uh, in this scene that we also had snow. In this case, it wasn't blowing too much. It was sad air, I called it. <laughs> then you can see um, to, that was to introduce this much more mil the military presence that was always pervasive in Gilead, uh, you know, and the military um, vehicles, which you get just wind of, that for this whole episode, it was very important that we got, got the feel that they were absolutely locked down and that these women were now to be protected because they were so precious. So we had lots of discussions about how to bring the procession in. I think I went through several ideas of uh, horses leading the men and the classic military uh, funeral, but we ended up on the saddest thing was a single drummer. I use a lot of drone to take them in so that they are small people, big space. And then we use Steadicam, and the show in general uses quite a bit of Steadicam. I had four cameras this day uh, and a 50-foot techno because we wanted to get over, out, and over. This shot here would have been using the techno actually uh, moving across the foreground of these um, crosses while in the background you can see they're slightly soft. So the notion was also using focal planes to really decide where the eyeball wants to look and what what we want to get out of the imagery. So you can see it's more impressionistic as a result. As you can also see, we were wanting a very specific uh, feeling of where the color red is and where the military is. I was trying to use as much negative space or, or call it open space to give the sense of scope and scale. Always little people and a big, vast universe. All right, so this drone shot was particularly important to really get a sense of the setup, the nature of the set. We got there on the day, and this center one originally had been black. And we got up to this, this view that you're looking at now, and Lydia, who eventually gets up there, was uh, wearing a dark costume, and so it was black against black, so we couldn't see her. So. Um, we had a quick confab and uh, decided we would cover it with red, which of course was quite a bit of a hustle because we were in the middle of a, a golf course and where were we going to get <laughs> red, red, um, you know, covering. And then when we got it, of course, it was a bit of a mess because we couldn't, you know, we were doing it uh, in the moment. You'll notice that on each coffin is a twig of pine and we put pine around here as well. Pine is a very symbolic tree means something different in all cultures. In the native community, it can mean longevity, it can mean peace. And so I felt the symbolism of sort of breaking up the, the starkness with these twigs gave it um, another layer of story to what this whole moment um, of the funeral was going to be about. Oh Lord, when we are lost, and sick at heart. When we are weary and in need of strength, so long as we live, they too shall live. Up till now, we have not seen a face. All of these veils 
were very carefully designed for the whole walk toward that these women had been rendered faceless and anonymous. And that's a major theme of not only the show, uh, but this particular episode. And now you can see our our little plan here of the the twigs, uh, which also become revealed. And our ants over here. So the whole idea was that everything was very graphically lined up. This particular angle is from the um, the techno and the techno was also always moving so it always felt like this world was shifting and that we were discovering other parts to the scene. Lydia is um, often portrayed, well is always portrayed as this heinous character and um, I felt in this particular environment we needed to understand that for all of her tough love she actually loves her girls more than life itself and for her this was a huge loss you could just barely see through those veils these hats are fantastic for all of the characters who use them regularly to play with the camera as to how much we can and can't see and you'll notice that throughout the series and in particular Lizzie will show parts of her face it's always feeling like the anonymity and the peekaboo quality of these hats is either working against us or working for us this was all about this moment here and revealing Offred that she was indeed alive and had survived so and again you can see how she is using the frame to reveal a very particular part of her face. And this is very much Lizzie uh, understanding the camera and really working with it. So I wanted this to have a dreamlike quality, so it was snapshots of a much longer event. And also to capture the longer story of how she was, what she was going through in this moment. So to capture this, we had the 50 foot techno because of course she was raised up. Uh, quite deep in the back and it was moving around um, Lydia as she was turning because she was talking to all the girls and uh, at the same time we had a steady cam down on the ground which was looking at Lizzie. Lizzie's shot now became all about these. The show is very much about finding those moments, those intense moments and the wonderful thing about working with Lizzie, with Anne, with all of the actors, is that it becomes a dance between the camera and the emotional context and the mood, and everybody plays together like a, a, an incredible orchestrated dance. The whole setup of this scene was to capture that moment and it speaks volumes to what Gilead what the shared emotion of not only the scene but of Gilead itself is in this particular moment we went from the bombing it was how to how to get us to a place of such mournful sadness and with such simplicity and um, of course uh, who do we look to but Elizabeth Moss who can do it like no other.